Exactly. You are now entering the cinema chop shop. So park your ass right there. Right there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you'll see a Patreon account. If you click it, you can become a member. All you got to do is try to recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to. So click the damn link. Now, with that being said, we're here today to review a brand new movie by the name of Exorcist Believer. Now, this is what David Gordon Green's new trilogy is going to be Exorcist Believer. And it's going to be followed by Deceiver. And I don't remember the name of the third film. But knowing that this is the man that directed the Halloween franchise, the new trilogy for Halloween, and also knowing that this is the man that wrote the new Halloween movies, I went into it with a whole lot of skepticism. Now, he's not a bad director. I'm going to just say that up front. But he is a terrible writer. He is not a good writer. His writing credits are not that amazing. And his storylines are mediocre as shit. He had me at Halloween 2018. I was like, okay, I can see what you're doing. I see how you're b- world building here. All right, let's see what you got. Then destroyed me with kills and then devastated me with ends. So I am I was really skeptical going into this movie. But surprisingly, I'm going to have to say for once, I think I'm going to go against the critics. All right, but we'll get into that a little bit later. The story follows two little girls that go into the woods. They go ahead and do some spooky shit. And they end up being possessed by a demon. Then their parents are kind of dealing with how to save their daughter's souls. That's basically what this movie is about. Kind of like a rehatching of the original Exorcist. Nothing new. You've seen this a billion times. But I will have to give some credit to the young actresses that play the possessees. These young girls by the name of Lydia Jewett and Olivia O'Neill. I have to give super credit to these two actresses. They did a phenomenal job of this movie. Uh, I mean, Leslie Odom Jr., he was an interesting character. Ellen Burst, she did a really good job. But at the same time, Olivia and Lit- Lydia stole the damn show. Freaking fantastic acting from these two ladies, especially in the third act. You don't really see much of them throughout the movie. Uh, you just see little, like, tidbits. But in the third act is really when they shine. And they really show you that they've taken this possession thing very seriously the movie does have some really great practical effects there's one practical effect scene that i wasn't really too fond of which is a wild coming for me because i am a lover of all things practicals but looking at that scene i felt like it could have looked a little bit better uh the third act to me was a little bit lackluster it didn't really hit the way that i felt like it should hit but at the same time, when you're watching this movie, this movie really transitions very smoothly. The storytelling in a movie, like I said, is, is is pretty decent. It's nothing like too out of the ordinary. It's, it's things that we've seen before. Two girls being possessed at the same time was a new little element. I thought that was an interesting tidbit. But at the same time, when as you're watching this movie, you're kind of just like, this doesn't really feel like an exorcist movie. It just feels like an exorcism movie. It's a movie about an exorcism that's being performed on these two girls who are possessed. It just so happens that some of the characters in this movie just so happen to be characters in the exorcist franchise, which necessarily isn't a bad thing. Uh, This movie kind of just stands alone on its own. And you can tell that Green had tons of love for the franchise. He has little tidbits in the movie that kind of remind you of the original. There's a couple of Easter eggs, but it's nothing too crazy. There's also an amazing scene in the third act. Should get a pop in the theater, in my opinion, but, you know, it is what it is. But again, like like I said, it just doesn't feel like an Exorcist installment. It, there really is no, no connection, like I said, other than the characters. Like, of course, you even see it in the trailer, so this isn't a spoiler, but Ellen's character, she says, he knows me, right, in the trailer. So that means that the demon that is possessing the little girls is the same demons that possessed Reagan when she was younger. Uh, The problem is that there's not really any dialogue or any, there's dialogue a little bit, but there's nothing really to make you feel like, damn, this is the same demon. You get what I'm saying? Like it, it just didn't feel like there was any real connection to the movie. Like nothing that was like solid that made you go, damn, okay, this, this demon is back for revenge or this demon is doing this again or something, you know, like you just felt like I just needed that connection. And we never really got it. Like I said, other than characters coming from one franchise from that original franchise and just popping up here as only real, like kind of like umbilical cord that you get from the original franchise. Another problem that I had with the movie is the, 
the choice of it seemed like they were confused about what era they were in. There's some scenes that feel like you're in the 90s, and then there's other scenes that feel like you're in modern day, and it just really felt like they didn't know what they were doing. There's a historical event that happens in the movie, so it kind of places it in the 2000s timeline, but then, again, you have scenes in the movie where it's just like, yo, this character has this, or this, this was featured in the movie. And you wonder to yourself, well, what freaking year is this supposed to be? You know, uh, outside of that, though, like I said, um, the movie, the, the movie was pretty good. I, like I said, I feel like the third act could have been a little bit better. But I'm going to warn you now, if you're going into this movie with Exorcism, Exorcist 1 on your mind, you're definitely not going to like this movie because you're already going into it comparing it. The two different types of films. As, as the first Exorcist movie was a cinematic movie. Uh, it was based on telling a really good story, and it was it was just it's very cinematic when you look at it. This movie does not have that cinematic aspect at all, in my opinion, at freaking all. Uh, <laughs> and it's just it's just a straight up new age kind of horror movie, which isn't a bad thing. Like I said, it's a it's it's like I said, it's an entertaining movie. Like it's something that I would definitely go. I would recommend people to watch if if you're into possession films. Like I said, this movie could have been called anything, and you wouldn't even know the difference. It didn't even have to be called Exorcist. You could have called it damn near anything. To the point, um, like I said, the, the cast is surrounding the two little girls. They're pretty mediocre. Um, Ellen's character gives a really fantastic speech somewhere in the middle of the movie. But again, her character kind of feels like fodder. Like, it's just like she's just not an essential character in this movie. Like, she's just there to say some shit. And then, like, all right, cool. Like, we're done. Like, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, her character doesn't even feel essential to the, the story. It's just really just like, how can we bring this character in the movie? And then they find a way to bring the character in the movie. But I will say this I think that the critics are kind of overreacting with all the bad reviews and giving it a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes from critics uh, and then audiences I think is averaging about a 50%. I mean, out of 10, this movie is like a six or a seven in that area. It's very like average. It's pretty like in the middle. It's nothing that's going to blow you away, but at the same time, it is a movie that's probably going to, it's going to entertain you. It's not going to bore you. Uh, as long as you don't go into it expecting the first Exorcist movie, then you should be fine. You get what I'm saying? So um, that's really all I got for this movie. Um, here on the Cinema Chop Shop, we great movies in three ways. Either you get body that sits in the bowels of hell, and I tell you, shit is basura, homie. Or you get a big fat meh, which means the monster metals, mediocre, mid-range, mid-range, and all that good shit. Or I say it's spared, and I say go watch this movie, drop what you're doing, head out to the movie theater right now. I'm going to have to give this movie a big fat meh. Not, not quite my tempo. Not impressed. But it can be better. Oh, God. Meh. But the TV gave me the impression that... We said meh. M-E-H. Meh. Yeah, you heard it, folks. I'm giving this movie a big fat meh. The biggest reason why is because although it is entertaining... It's entertaining and it's worth the watch. I just don't feel like it's something that's going to knock your socks off. You get what I'm saying? Um, it also doesn't really feel like an exorcist movie. It just feels like a movie about exorcism featuring people from the original cast. You get what I'm saying? It's not going to blow you away. Uh, there is some fun stuff in there. I think the two girls in the movie are fantastic. They steal the show. I would definitely love to meet them, have them sign some shit. But other than that, this movie doesn't have a whole lot going for it in the realm of originality uh, other than there's two people being possessed instead of one person but that's all i got let me know if you agree or disagree whatever the case may be drop it in the comment section down below and you are now exiting the cinema shop shop hope you guys have a magnificent day and adios homies